Good morning. Good to see everybody this morning, and uh, good to have you in here worshiping with us. As we're always glad to have, and uh, we're, it's always good to see your smiling faces and uh, spend some time with each other together. Uh, we have a, a couple of announcements this week. Um, one, uh, traditionally we've had a service uh, on a Tuesday evening of Thanksgiving week with our partners in the back. We have not yet heard back from them yet, but we we think that we're still doing that. So make sure you check out the uh, website, Facebook page, and all those things for info. Um, does that start at 6? It's a 7 o'clock service. 7 o'clock service. So uh, we're... I can't give you an update on that because I don't have it right now, so sorry. Uh, and then also on Saturday this week um, is our, uh, the worship team will be decorating. So for those that are uh, a part of that, or if others would like to help, that'll be at 9 o'clock on Saturday. And we'll have the church all decorated from Christmas, which I'm sure all of you have your houses decorated for Christmas already. And they look so beautiful and wonderful. Uh, we started that yesterday, so... Um, let's see. There is uh, one special announcement. I want to make sure I have all the others first. I think one other one was my wife wanted everyone to know that we had 248 uh, Operation Christmas Child boxes. So we were very close. We had we had a goal of 250, and uh, so that was a very good job. Thank you for doing that, and uh, th those will be greatly used I know that uh, if you've never had a chance to see some of those videos when they get passed out that's a that's a special thing uh, but don't forget some of these upcoming Christmas things that we're doing that we really haven't done ever one is on December the 1st Zanesville's having their Christmas parade and we actually have a float in it so go find a place along the paid route and parade route and you can watch those of you that are helping and walking and passing out things thank you for doing that that's outreach and uh, we're, we love that we're able to do that, and uh, that starts at 6 o'clock on December the 1st, and uh, look to the town Facebook and things for where that begins and where that goes through the parade route. Uh, and then also, we're doing a new thing. The town is having, on December the 17th, a, like, open house f for the downtown, and all the downtown churches, if they wanted to participate, businesses, buildings, they can have something. And so we decided, uh, the we meaning not me, but <laughs> others, uh, to have a uh, Christmas walkthrough. And so we're going to have um, a, the story of Jesus, and uh, it'll be through different parts of the church. It's going to be very cool. Uh, bring the little kids, bring your friends, and... Uh, it's it's going to be a very nice thing and so they're going to keep doing that from i think it's five to eight is what time it is five thirty to eight thirty thank you uh and so that'll be a great thing you can come and walk through it then there'll be uh treats and things in the fellowship hall afterwards and uh, hopefully have a great turnout like we did for halloween and keep getting more people in the church so uh but our last but not least note this morning is a really special one uh, and Miss Christman is here with us this morning, and that's Kathy's mom. Hi, Betty. It's good to see you. <laughs> and it is her birthday today. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it was my birthday on Thursday, so we're almost intact together there. So, uh, but I think you got me by a couple of years here. Uh, she, she, it is her 94th birthday, and we're so glad to have her in church. We thought we'd sing sing happy birthday to her this morning, so uh, if you want to sing happy birthday to Betty. She's got it down. I think we need to put you on the parade float. And you, you've got the hand wave already going. <laughs> She's like a dignitary here. So uh, well, we're, we're glad we can celebrate with you. Any other things that we, anybody got anniversaries or things coming up? All right. Well, we will take it away with our prelude this morning. Good to see everybody.
Good morning, Central Trinity. Our opening hymn can be found on page 102, Now Thank We All Our God. We will sing verses 1 and 3. Would you please stand? Would you please remain standing for our Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, kids are dismissed to Kids Own Worship. Our prayer hymn this morning can be found on page 405. Seek ye first. We will sing verses 1 and 2.
We'll take a few moments to uh, share our joys and concerns this morning. Um, I see a, a couple that have uh, been out and under the weather and are back in here with us. It's good to see you this morning, Bill, and uh, glad you're feeling a little better. Uh, anybody else that would like to share? My great nephew, Logan, that I asked for prayer for last week, um, 14 months old, he had RSV and his lungs were already compromised. He was able to go home from the hospital. He's doing much better. Nice. Thank you for your prayers. Great. Thanks, Gail, for sharing that. Uh, I remember my other one, too. Glad to have Callie's mom here with us this morning and feeling a little better. We've been praying for you for a long time, too. So good to see you. I was out shopping the other day, and I got to meet with uh, Pastor England and Judy, and he was in his wheelchair, but he's doing somewhat better. He seemed real happy, and I just told him that we love you and we miss you, and Judy said we'll be returning soon, so I just wanted everyone to know. Great. Any others? All right. Uh, we'll go ahead then and... Oh, I didn't look behind me. Anything behind me? All right. We'll go ahead and uh, bow our heads and share in a moment of uh, quiet prayer and then pray together. <coughs> Father, we come to you. We share together, life together. We give the, the good and the bad, the happy, the sad, whatever things we're going through, whatever emotions that we feel. The best thing is, is that we know that we don't have to do it on our own. And we know, Father, that not only that, but we know that you help shoulder that burden for us. We couldn't do it ourselves. I ask God that for those that have been struggling with health issues that they begin to see and feel some relief in their life. Maybe a light at the end of that dark tunnel. Be with each of us as we try to keep growing in our faith and as we take this time and this week of Thanksgiving. May we truly give thanks and truly share together. And we begin that by sharing together this morning and the prayer that your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done, and it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Very pretty. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. And I believe the bells are going to be playing on the, the walkthrough, too, right? Yeah, so if you come to the walkthrough on the 17th, uh, you'll get to hear that and hear them, too. So, like I said, lots of musical talent, and we enjoy having it. Uh, well, we're coming uh, to the Sunday before Thanksgiving, and... Uh, Thanksgiving is one of those traditional holidays that we take time out of our lives and our schedules and all those things to get with the people that we love and to do the things that we Americans like to do, which is eat, right? That's number one. Uh, number two, then, is you take that turkey tryptophan nap afterwards, right? Uh, how many people have not missed that after turkey nap in like 20 years, you know? We know your your relatives will point you out later. Willard, I know that's you. <laughs> but you've got those moments, right? And you know them. It's why uh, one of my favorite Christmas movies is Christmas Vacation because I love Chevy Chase and uh, Clark Griswold, and we love that movie in our family, but one of my favorite moments in that family is really, it's not meant to be super funny, it's the doorbell rings and more grandparents are coming and they show the house, someone's watching TV, everybody's doing something, but then they show the other set of grandparents and they're watching TV and they're <laughs> passed out asleep. And I'm like, it's that sound that reminds you of things, right? There's certain sounds, there's certain smells, there's all those things that remind you of something special about 
what you've done together as a family. And, you know, I can always remember uh, my grandpa sitting there on the couch, passed out while we're trying to watch some type of cowboy football game because that's what we're about also at our house is the Dallas Cowboys. So uh, it was my birthday this past week. So uh, I know that George has probably some type of very special cowboy gear that he's got for me. So uh, because he loves he loves the Steelers. And to be honest, we need to pray for him. So uh, some Sunday it might be nice to lay hands on him. So as he goes by, uh, I'm just teasing. What is it that Jim always says? You have the power of the microphone. <laughs> but we have those moments, right? And they're just these special things that we can all laugh and share in because they mean something. And Thanksgiving is no different. But it's what Thanksgiving is about that sometimes is difficult and is so different is because we are asked to do the thing that sometimes it's hard for us and admit that we needed some help and say, thank you. Thank you for helping me through this difficult time that I had. Thank you for uh, sharing with me uh, your Thanksgiving dinner, whatever it is. Sometimes it's hard to say thanks. And so this week can mean an opportunity for you uh, to grow in your faith as you not only give thanks to those around you, but give thanks to the Lord. And you'll see why here as we read our scripture this morning. It's uh, First Chronicles 16, and it begins there with verse 30. And it's up there on the screen. You can look at it. Tremble before him, all the earth. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let them say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let the trees of the forest sing. Let them sing for joy before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Cry out, save us. God, our Savior, gather us and deliver us from the nations that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. And then all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. Now those are special moments right because uh, what the writer here is getting at is that all things of the earth are firmly established but they're firmly established because they were made by God and it, what it's getting at here that I found in a couple of different places is is that all of creation cries out and gives thanks and gives praise to God. Have you ever thought about that, right? Think about the things in life that you enjoy. Maybe it's a, a sunset going down uh, over the tips of the trees, or you like to uh, go on vacation somewhere and sit uh, by a, a, a nice body of water, you know, and, and feel and hear that sound as it goes uh, through and kind of washes over you. It might be that you like just the simplicity of things and maybe it's just the laughter of your children or grandchildren but it's always a moment where you catch yourself saying I like that that moved me but in this moment here that we're reading what the Bible is telling us is is that those things were not just meant for us but they were meant to give praise to God because he and he alone was the creator of all things. And so when the wind blows through the trees and you hear the creaking and cracking of the limbs, it's praise to God. 
when you're in your home and you have maybe one of those tin roofs and you hear the rain coming down, you give praise to God. All things are lifting their voices to the one that we should love so much. It's why we use the word about God that God is omnipotent. It says it in scripture even too. The Lord says, I am omnipotent. I am all powerful. I am almighty. That's what the Greek says. All powerful and almighty. Not all and mighty, but almighty. One word. Meaning that I am over every living thing because I made it. There's so many times that I can remember as a pastor uh, someone coming to me and saying, you know, uh, hey, John, this part of life is difficult. I don't understand what God's getting at here. What is God trying to have for me? What does God want for me to do? How do I know what that looks like? And I'd answer all those questions the same way. And I'd say, do you believe in God? Yeah. Do you trust him? Yeah. Yeah. Well, then know this, God's God, and you're not. It seems like a simple thing, right? But it's the truth. And what we forget is that the Lord, who is omnipotent and all-powerful and almighty, is above all things. And so instead of worrying and instead of uh, being upset, we should look to the heavens and say, thank you. How many times... At night, have you ever gone outside and just looked up? You can see so much more if you look up. Because we live in a world where everybody does what? They look down. They look down because they're looking at this contraption that's attached to their body, and it's like an extra living and breathing thing, right? And we all have it. You just, you never know, right? One of my favorite moments uh, in the last couple of years is uh, we were on vacation, and I've told you before that I like to sit and people watch. That's my thing. Birds, you can go watch them, you know, get the binoculars out. But I like to go to the mall and people watch. Uh, So if I'm somewhere and watching you, make sure that I'll tell it in a sermon later on some other time. (laughs) Because I have the mic power. (laughs) But anyways, you're, you're thinking of that, and uh, I remember I was sitting there at the mall, and uh, I was just looking around, and my eyes were drawn to this, uh, I guesstimated, in her 90s um, lady, and she was sitting there, and she was watching uh, straight ahead in front of her. Uh, her grandkids or great-grandkids were playing on one of the play places there uh, in Fort Wayne, where we used to live, and I was watching her. And she was so interesting, so I just moved a little closer to watch her interacting with her grandkids. And then I realized that not only was she interacting with them, but she was looking down at her phone. And here at 90, 91, 92, I'm guessing she was, she wasn't just looking at some old flip phone from like the 90s. She had a smartphone there, and she was playing Angry Birds. And I was like, whoa. Whoa. And she said, she looked at me and saw that I was looking at her, and she said, sorry, I don't usually play Angry Birds. I like uh, Sugar Rush or whatever that other one is called. (laughs) Candy Crush. Yeah, there you go, Candy Crush. And I was like, what? (laughs) I hear I thought she was enjoying watching her grandkids and all these things, and she was smiling and watching, but really what she was doing is looking down at her phone, and she was throwing things at little Angry Birds. If you've never played that game, that, that's what it is, right? You're throwing rocks and stones at little birds, and they try to get away. <laughs> what do we do in life, right? That is our time waster. Now, if you play Angry Birds, I'm not saying you're going to hell. <laughs> so don't anybody come to me and say, uh, you know, Pastor, I, I kind of like Angry Birds. It's a good thing to do to just get your mind going or whatever. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is is that that's what we're wasting our time on. It's literally called a time waster, right? 
because we have a few minutes here and there, and so there's things on our phone that draw you back to it, and you just waste time. You want to know what the number one time waster is in the entire world? Starts with an F and ends with a book. Facebook, right? Now, I've been doing this Internet thing a long time, and I can remember in youth ministry first starting out, and I had some older kids that had come home for the holidays, uh, some of my youth kids, and they were crowding around their uh, laptop doing something. I said, what are you guys doing? And they're, on, they're like, oh, we're on Facebook, but you can't do it because you're old and we're in school. Because it was started for just college kids to keep tabs. But then what happened is, is there was such a clamor for it that the rest of the world does it. But now, if you notice, the college kids want nothing to do with it. And it's just all of us older folks on it poking each other or what are all those other things that you can do on Facebook. And it is the number one time waster. So if you have a minute, you scroll through Facebook. We all do it. My wife's addicted to it at night before she goes to sleep, and sometimes she has a hard time sleeping. And I say, well, part of the problem is is because instead of sitting and reading a book or uh, just kind of closing your eyes or watching a little show that you like, you're sitting there and you're flipping through Facebook, and she does it so fast. I'm like, how can you even read what you're looking at anyways? And she's like, well, actually, I'm just looking for pictures that I like. And I'm like, then why don't you... Do something else. But it's the number one time waster. You know what people used to do when they had time? They'd pray. They'd read scripture. They'd talk to their family. You know how it is. You go to a restaurant and you're getting ready to eat and you look to the table next to you and there's six people in a family sitting there and each one has their own phone out and they're looking at their phone and they're still ordering while they're doing that. It's multitasking, right? Kids are really good at that. I know that my son every once in a while when he's doing homework... He is listening to music, watching television, and playing a game on his phone all the while while he's still looking at the computer and doing his homework. I don't know if he's a genius or if he just has too much time on his hands. (laughs) But it's time wasted. And so here the Lord is saying, come to me because I am the one that created all things and I created this world that we live in and it's not to be wasted but it's to be praised it's to be shown the respect and love that it deserves because it is calling out to me all day long praise the lord amen just like we just read and so the trees of the forest sing out Let them all sing for the joy of the Lord because he is good and his love endures forever. That's the second part to that, right? First is we have that omnipotent, all-powerful God who everything in life give praise to him. And then secondly, we have the God of love whose love is endures forever i said in the first service that it shouldn't just be a forever but it should be like an echo right it should be like forever 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 and it should just keep on going right because that is what god is all about his love is so much for you that it never stops it never ceases And so we look at that word right before it and we say, his love endures. Well, that's an interesting word. What does that mean? It means to await, to stay behind. And then I looked it up in another place and I found one that I really liked. It said, it literally means in the Greek, remaining under the load or bearing up, enduring the load for the believer. You want to know how that happens? Through God's omnipotent power. 
You see why words are words in the scripture? Because they want you to look and to dig a little bit deeper. And that's why when you have time, that should be what we do. But instead, we throw rocks at angry birds. Sit down for once. Because not only does that phone that you have probably uh, take some time from you, but if you use it right, there's actually some really good things in that. There's scripture that you can find. There's Bibles that you can read. You could have at your fingertip 50 different versions able to be there for all of you. I have a little program on my iPad when I preach from, and it has six versions all across the page, and I can look while I'm talking because I can do all those things too, like chew gum, pat my head, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I'm the trained monkey up here. That's what the preacher really is. It's like you come up here each and every day to watch the pastor and see what he'll do. Well, you never know. So if you miss it, you can't get the reruns. you got to come in here and see. But it comes to that moment that we look at, and it's about endurance. Because the Bible, again, Paul says it. He wants to acquit something with what they know. This was a time period that they had the Olympic Games in Greece, right? The, the huge uh, places where they had all these different, sometimes violent th things that came in. And so he equated the game part. And he said, finish the race. Finish the game. Because at the end... It's the best part. Now I'll tell you this. I skipped ahead for you. I skipped ahead in the Bible for you. If you've never actually sat and gotten through the whole thing, we win in the end. Right? So there. Spoiler alert. We win. You should know that because you should start from that ending and move forward every little bit because in the end we win. And so if you're not putting everything you have into that omnipotent, all-powerful God, and then if you're not letting his love endure forever for you, then in the end you won't win, you'll lose. Matthew tells us, he who gains his life will lose it. You know how he spells that, lose it? L-O-O-S-E. He'll lose it. Meaning what you're doing is you're not losing it, but you're shedding it and giving the power to the one who's always had it anyways. It's like you're running those races, you know, on the relay race, and you've got your hand and you're running back. It's so much fun to watch uh, those relay teams that pass the baton that are really good at it, right? Because they're all like in one motion. They're reaching back, they're stepping, they're grabbing, and they just keep going. Now, it's also fun to watch the other ones, too, that they like reach back and they reach back and then they stop because they're about to go over the line and then they're like, give me the thing and then they all start yelling at each other. Uh, I've seen those moments too. But God's love never stops. And it endures. And as I said, it literally means in the Greek, remaining under the load. You know what that load is? That load is all that junk that you and I have that we carry along with us wherever we go. If you've had therapy, they refer to it as baggage. Let me save you some money on that too. The therapy is great, but also you should know that we all have baggage. What the therapy does though is help you work through your own baggage. So you can see and know how you got to where you are now. And where we are now should be the best place that we are. Right? My father was a 40-year Methodist minister. 
And I have been in so many different appointments and things and taking my kids all over Ohio and West Ohio to all these different appointments. And here we are now, and I'm hoping it's my last one because I'm getting old. <laughs> and I'm hoping it's my last one because it's tiresome to move, right? It takes a lot out of you. But what you see is that wherever you go, it's the same. The people are the same. They may look different. They may talk different. They may dress different. But they still got the same things. And they're all looking at their life and saying, my burden's bigger than your burden. It's the opposite of keeping up with the, the Jones girls, you know. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. If you weren't here, go back and watch it, and you can rewind the tape and see. But if we have to keep up with them, right, we don't, but we keep up with everybody when we have our burdens, too. And we're like, well, your burden's not that bad. Mine's bigger than yours. And we talk about it like it's important, and we look and we say, here, come look at me with my burden and everything that I'm sharing in, and it's awful. And God says, you know what? You don't have to have that burden because I am enduring forever, and endurance means that I am taking your load. And so if you would just step out and get out of the way, you wouldn't even feel it because I would shoulder it. And so that's what thank you is all about. It's about looking to the heavens and seeing the stars, seeing creation, seeing the dark and the light, the good and the bad and all those things and saying, you know what, almighty, all-powerful, omnipotent God, the God who created everything, here's my burden. Take it. Because I know that your love endures forever. And wherever I go, I know that you also will be. And those last two verses, they tell it all. We could put up verse 35 and 36 there, Sammy. The last two verses tell it all because... They're getting to the part where they're saying, and it says they're crying out. You had it up there. Save us. God, our Savior, gather us and deliver us from the nations that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. And you know what God says to all that? I've already saved you because it, all you have to do is open your heart to me and ask me in and believe it to be true. You know, we're talking John 3.16 here. And I will take your burden and give you rest. And so they're crying out to God. And they finish it in verse 36. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Meaning from the beginning to the end. Then all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. Now, I don't know about you, but when we're here together as a church, you should feel those moments. We should feel the praise the Lords and the Amens, right? They should come out for us because we're giving praise. But instead, we worry too much about who's near us, who's around us, whatever. But the Lord says, give praise to me because everything should be praised because I made it all. And not only that, it was all for you with the love that I have for you. And it never ends. And so even if you are so lonely and so upset and having such hard problems that you think I'm not there, I've never left to begin with. And so on this Sunday before Thanksgiving, I give that to you so that you can say, thank you. Thank you, God, for loving me. Thank you for giving me all the grace and peace that you have. 
Thank you for being there always. So do that. Share in that. For the Lord, as he shares with you. Will you bow your heads with me? Heavenly Father, as we go through this Thanksgiving week, may we share in the creation that you've made. It was all just for us to see creation calling out to you. And your love endures forever because it means that you're going to take our burden and hold on to it. We don't have to carry it anymore. We can release it. We can let it go. We can step aside and say, thank you, God. Praise the Lord and amen. Our closing hymn today can be found on page 62. All creatures of our God and King. We will sing verses 1 and 5. Would you please stand? Praise ye, alleluia. As you go from this place, may you give that praise to the one who loved you so much that never leaves. And uh, as you go through this week and spend time with, in Thanksgiving with your family and friends, know that your church goes with you too. It was good to see you this morning.